What's up everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to remove the steering wheel out of your 1995 Ford Ranger. This should be the same pretty much all the way up to 2012. My 1999 Ford Ranger had the same exact interior as my 95 and the 2007 model had the same exact interior on the inside except for the steering wheel. There was a slight difference there. Also I'm going to be showing you how to install an NRG hub adapter and quick release. Step one, we need to discharge the battery. So we're going to pop the hood and we're going to disconnect the battery. You can start with just one terminal or in this case we did both sides. It's 8mm on the positive and this truck had a random aftermarket negative terminal with a 13mm. On the sides of the steering wheel you're going to see two plastic covers. You can pop them off with a flathead screwdriver and then you can unscrew the bolts. Then gently lift out the airbag and disconnect the cable. Next, you can disconnect the wiring from the steering wheel to the clock spring. And then with a T50 Torx, you're going to remove the bolt. Impact wrench makes it super easy. Now, you could just try and tug on the steering wheel gently, but mine was on there pretty good, so I decided to try using a steering wheel puller. Now, the steering wheel puller in this case was not working so good. The middle section was not long enough to actually reach the bolt, so I had to jerry-rig and put a socket in there as an extension. So here you can see the socket that I used. I had a problem though with the teeth of the puller coming apart. You can see it slipping right about here, and then the whole thing would just come undone. So what I did was I used a C-clamp to tighten it all down and keep it together, and I was able to gently remove the steering wheel. Now, I do recommend using a steering wheel puller if you have one because on the Xterra, I ended up breaking the clock spring because I yanked on the steering wheel too hard and the cable was still connected and I tore the ribbon on the clock spring. So this is a much more gentle way to remove the steering wheel. Next, they tried to install the hub adapter, but there was a bunch of plastic pieces on the clock spring that were getting in the way. So I used some pliers to break them off. So there's the one on the bottom and then there was a couple more up here on the top. With that out of the way, I was able to push the hub adapter onto the clock spring and the steering column. Now I do recommend hand torquing the steering wheel bolt and then using a wrench to tighten it down and then it's 30 foot-pounds to lock it in. Also, you could just add the new steering wheel here directly to the hub adapter, or in this case, I'm using a quick release. Make sure that you hand torque the screws first to make sure that they're seated properly and so you don't cross thread them, and then you can tighten them down. Here, you see a little button here. It's a safety release, so you have to press down the button in order to release the quick release. I feel that's a little bit annoying and unnecessary, so I just use an Allen key here to loosen the bolt and pop the button off. And then now I can just grab onto wherever I want on the quick release. Next, we're gonna wire the horn to the quick release and then assemble the rest of the steering wheel. When you tighten these, use a cross pattern just like you would on your lug nut. Next, we're going to go back in and we're going to reconnect the battery and go for a test drive. So as you can see here, the steering wheel is quite a bit closer to me than stock. With the quick release, it adds about three inches. So the steering wheel is three inches closer to you. And you'll also notice here as I'm driving slowly that the steering wheel makes quite a bit of noise. I'm not really sure where that's coming from. I think it's from the wires inside the hub making noise as it turns, but I haven't been able to successfully make the sound go away. It does the same exact thing in the Xterra, but in the Xterra I was able to quiet it down using some electrical tape. In the Ranger I used t-shirts to kind of cut up and shred it up, but that didn't help too much. Couple quick notes, the quick release on the Ranger is exactly the same one that I used on the Xterra. So I can actually mix and match the steering wheels if I wanted to. 
The steering wheel that I used on the Ranger this time is actually the wheel that started on the Xterra, but I swapped it out because it was too small and it was covering up the gauge cluster and I couldn't see the speedometer. Same case here in the Ranger, the wheel is so small that I kind of have to look over the top of it to see my speed, so that's kind of annoying. I'll be going to a bigger steering wheel in this truck as well. A couple of the details I need to sort out are the airbag light and the horn. The wiring on the Ranger is a little bit different than it was on the Xterra. With the airbag, I was able to just easily insert the resistor supplied by NRG to bypass the light, but the wiring on the clock springs a little different, so I gotta figure that part out. Also, the horn didn't quite wire up and plug in the same way as it did on the Xterra, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to uh, find the exact horn wire for the Ranger and plug that in on the adapter side of the hub or mount one on the dashboard. I'll be doing a new video on those pretty soon. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and if you haven't already, consider subscribing. I have a brand new car, or not brand new car, it's a 99 Integra that I'm picking up, but I'm gonna be doing some videos on that soon. So stay tuned for that. Until then, we'll see you guys next time.